welcome to the Dove Spa Media Entertainment Headquarters. And this will be the last gig of the video that we're going to try hard on. Oh. I use these lights to make my first movies. <laughs> I was, I've, I've been told never to use them again by actual filmmakers. Here we are. The moment I realized Utility Carol was going to be an actual short film, and one of my best works, was not the moment I realized this seven page script could not be one minute, could not be four minutes, could not be seven minutes, but had to be roughly 13 minutes. And he's like, well I got this idea about taking the Christmas Carol and making it a spoof, you want to be in it, and I was like, yeah, sure. We were supposed to make a one minute PSA, and uh, I told my professor, uh, I want to make a PSA about utility bills, but here's the twist, because you know, there's, you're always supposed to have a, a twist in your pitch. I said, we're basically going to retool the story of a Christmas Carol to be about utilities, because if you really think about it, you got the different seasons of the year and different uh, utility over expenditures. You and I write a seven page script and I bring it into class and I tell my professor boldface, yeah, I can put this, I can put this within one minute. I couldn't, I could put the first scene in one minute. We made the first part of it, which was Ghost of Utility, I think it was Ghost of Utility present first, and um, I think, don't quote me on that, but um, and he wanted to basically add a bunch of extra parts to it with, with all the other ghosts basically, so that's kind of how it expanded into what it is now, I think. That's how it evolved from a school project to a well-produced sketch to a short film. It's definitely evolved from what it was going to be originally. And then uh, Devin kind of took a perfectionist kind of viewpoint on it. Uh, it's a lot better than I thought it would be when we originally started filming. I don't know what to do with these. I'm just going to have them in my hand to fidget with. As I mentioned earlier, it, it kind of brings this like light-hearted seriousness to filmmaking, oh, like a satirical uh, aspect to it. So tell me about the grade you guys got on the project. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I thought it was like really cool looking. The editing was awesome. Like I don't know. I thought it was like one of the best in the class. Honestly, I think I got like a 65 on it or something. Holy shit! Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I got like 65. There was nothing that I could have come with to prepare for this. <laughs> so I didn't have a shot list, uh, and I never created a shot list, except in rare instances, like a sequence that is was just complicated that would require a lot of so shots. It was very filmed, like, uh, I think I read the script once before we did it. The whole time I was just winging it, uh, to be honest, and there have been projects, I'm comfortable saying that because there have been projects where I plan down to the angle of shots. Um, but this time around, I just wanted to focus purely on quality. I think one of the main things is like <laughs> just getting set up, <laughs> like getting set up a little bit faster. I got away with it because uh, I would spend eight hours shooting something that was only 30 seconds. I would spend so much time just going through the whole creative process during the shoot. So everything except for the script, uh, I would mull out with other people while we were filming. They're, they're never completely organized. When anything with his brother is involved and Sean, things get kind of crazy, I guess. I would take uh, hours uh, setting up a shot for something that didn't have a shot list and that would confuse uh, some of the crew members, especially the cast members. But I think it all worked out for the best and I ended up doing, you do things completely differently when you don't plan. He actually took time to say, no, do that shoot over, that, do that scene over again, um, like several different times. And normally during different scenes, he, he's like, eh, yeah, that's good enough. Whereas this one, I feel like, has progressed to him saying, nope, do it again, do it again, do it again, over and over and over. Well, I, was, I think Devin just kind of tickling himself, trying to see what, <laughs> what he can do and kind of get away with. Yeah. Nothing was filmed in order. We filmed like one scene in 
like the summer and then another one like a month later. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. I needed something to encompass everything I could do on a technical level. He wants to make sure every frame and every shot is so intrinsically perfect with every lens and stuff. I'm always trying to make the quintessential Dolu Spa film because uh, I haven't made a, a truly great film yet. So I'm just trying to make something that feels true to my identity, but better. He's not only trying to prove himself as a filmmaker, but also trying to prove that his, his inner circle of, of filmmakers is very capable as well, which is why he, he wanted all the additional sound effects and he, he's trying these these new techniques in order to try to get something to, to look just right. And this is supposed to get me a job, it's supposed to give me money, and it's supposed to give me notoriety. He was DP, he was director, he was, you know, not sound, but you know, if he had to, he could have been. From the very beginning, I wrote the script with special effects in mind. I wanted to have green screens as much as possible, I wanted teleportation, I want confetti, I want uh, uh, VHS analog effects. The special effects are still pretty oh, awesome, those are way better than anything he's done before. And A Christmas Carol has historically, since maybe the silent era of film, been a tale revolving around the latest special effects in the film industry. You know, all the way from uh, black and white with so what's his face and, you know, innovations in chroma keying and matting to uh, Jim Carrey in motion capture. Compared to the it, first time I watched it, um, definitely the editing improved quite a bit and like I noticed that he was able to get those special effects with the ghost and everything. So I think this definitely came a long ways from when I first saw it. So. It's a very snappy feel to it. This is my first time using After Effects in video ever before, which may come as a shock to some people because of the fancy stuff that I've done for Waterman or for Breeze Man. I keep going back to Waterman because that's what I'm really, really familiar with. Just, just comparing the two is just like it's, it's a huge step up. I was thinking to myself, I want slow motion. I want uh, transparency. I want phasing. I want to have a scene where a ghost hands a note to a real person, even though the footage was taken days apart, miles apart. I never actually acted with Quentin on this, even though we have a whole scene together. Yeah, that's he's I mean. all green screen. I believe I give him my card. Mm -hmm. uh, I the, Sean was never on the shoot with, uh, with my section at all. I was interacting with nothing. I, well, I can't say nothing. I was interacting with Devin, essentially. And uh, the other part that was difficult was I had to give Sean... Uh, in, in, in movie, I had to give Scrooge the, some sort of note outside of my, my business card. And in order for that to work, Devin had to, to kneel and essentially grab the paper so fast he could mask out his own hand. That took a few tries. <laughs> this has weird special effects. I can't do good special effects, so I try to compensate by making weird and different special effects. And some of the stuff in here ended up being weirder than what was in my head, which is kind of a first. Yeah. I know he's proud of that confetti transporting. Oh thing. yeah. That was actually really fun to film. Yeah. That and then the flaming torch was pretty fucking sweet. Oh, I don't gosh. think he's ever lit anything on fire. <laughs> well, with, with this a purpose on uh, set before. Yeah, with a purpose <laughs> yeah. is the key thing. <laughs> Devin has a weird way of uh, editing a style that I don't know what to expect anytime he gets like a bunch of footage. And then he'll throw in like these transitions and like weird color effects that I was like, I don't think anyone would have done that. And I'm not saying that's bad or good. It's just Devin. I've always tended to try to give the craziest colors possible to my film. Uh, I try to bring up the saturation, put oranges here, put blues there, to the point where it's just about, just about to make people throw up, but it doesn't. I al I'm always testing that limit of how colorful I can make a video. The way I think of it is how can he not have this style? He's such a... <laughs> I mean, he's Devin, no matter what happens, so... It's hard to... It's hard for me to think of him making something that isn't uniquely his. Uh, Devin came to me asking me if I, I wanted to uh, produce a song for the Utility Carol. Uh, he asked me could I, if I could produce a song that was kind of like 80s Madonna-ish. 
Uh, and I worked with a, another person named Maddie Malcolm. I assumed he'd want me to be acting in it because that's usually what I'm doing. But then he mentioned he wanted me to actually write a song. And I was kind of taken aback. I was first nervous because I had never written any songs that anyone had ever heard before. She she helped me with the lyrics. I did all the music. And then we brought Jessica in afterwards, uh, made a makeshift as uh, sound uh, area in the middle of Devin's living room. He had a bunch of that foam stuff that's on the walls of recording studios. And then we had the, the microphone, Jessica, then like two tripods on either end. Oh, and the chairs, because remember, the chairs are kind of used oh. to help kind of like, yeah. be, be, like there's chairs used to become a canopy. And we just kind of like propped it up and Jessica was like squatting in the middle of all of it, recording it. I'm really not much of a, I need the best to be the best kind of thing. I'm like, you just throw some shit and I will, I will do it. <laughs> like... And uh, then uh, uh, added the vocals and I mastered from there. I just handed in the um, 7.1 sound mixes yesterday. And I handed in the score, uh, the music, oh, month plus ago, I think. Uh, for most of the score, what I had was effectively the rough cut that Devin sent me, and I just went through that. I saw the um, cues that need to be scored, for instance, a character appearing or something interesting happening, and I scored based on that. When you have something that, like, for instance, ghosts coming in, you need something that's horrifying, that sort of draws the viewer into that grotesque scene. When you have something like Quentin coming in the house, you need something jaunty and upbeat. And so my goals were sort of to take that and just make something that was nice and that fit. Uh, Andrew's been in God knows how many retarded roles, like literally making fun of retards. <laughs> I wasn't playing a retard this time, so <laughs> I think that helped. <laughs> It seems like you went from, from retired with Febreze uh -huh. to just straight up in retired, 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 retired. Right? So <laughs> you have a whole yeah. bunch of college age boys that have uh, been working together for a long time that are like minded, and you get really comfortable with each other. And when I say, hey, do whatever you want in this scene, you get wacky results. And that's exactly what I love. And believe it or not, there is more of an art form than some people may think. I think his philosophy is that he. Um... It's not so much as that we're doing a film, it's like this is an experience in our lives that we want to live through and like, um, it's an event, it's a moment in time. The people that work on these videos, they aren't doing it to be superstars or to get their name out there, it's just purely for fun working hard on a video to be able to see the end product. I usually come back with stories and just kind of a general good time. It's it's a lot of fun working with him. But there is a lot of fucking around in the meantime. Yeah. So it's a pretty relaxed culture, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of this this serious fun culture where it's uh, it's almost like a, a satire of filmmaking, but in yeah. real life. The challenge of why he takes so long is because he is enjoying himself. You know, he really goes all out for his work, even sacrifices some of his equipment. Did you, uh, did you guys ever show up stone to set? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Well, this is the first time I made a video that I am not embarrassed of to share with complete strangers and professional filmmakers, such as, you know, I don't know, let's say there's a Facebook group uh, where filmmakers come and share their videos and jack each other off. And I want to be in on the circle jerk. The quality of the videos have just skyrocketed after, you know, meeting new people and like Devin actually having schooling in uh, video production. So it, that's really interesting to see the progression from the beginning of his videos, uh, the beginning of his time making videos to the end now. That hey, it's time to go to the next level because honestly, I'm fucking scared. That's why I made a movie about ghosts.